Hey there, it's Brie, and these are my recent reads. These recent reads took place from March 22nd to April 11th, which is a little bit longer than I've been going recently. So it ended up being 21 days, and in those 21 days, I ended up reading 26 books because I did do a Jessica Kane marathon, and I also reread a bunch of books. So hopefully, even though there's 26 books that I'm going to talk about here, it won't be very long because a lot of them are rereads. So as always, I list all of the books down below along with links if you want to go pick them up yourself, and I also put the trigger warnings for the books down below too. I think I'm also going to start including the rep in the books down in the description box just in case you're curious about them because a lot of times it's hard to know or hard to find out the representation that are in the books so if I know of them I will list it usually in my reviews on Goodreads and on Instagram when I post my reviews on Instagram but I thought it might be helpful maybe to put them in the description box also. I really only do this when I do my recent reads because my recent reads videos are for when I go in depth about the books and talk about them. I don't usually do this for my wrap-ups otherwise it probably wouldn't fit in the description box because of how many books I read in a month. But anyway, sorry for the rambling. Let's talk about these books. I am going to go in the order that I read the books. The first book that I read was Him by L.L. Ash. This book I gave three stars. This is an age gap romance and the hero is her best friend's dad. So it has birthday girl vibes in it. In fact, there are a lot of like parallels between this and birthday girl and it was almost to its detriment for me. So I actually read the first chapter of this in the first chapter challenge vlog that I did recently and I was immediately sucked in to this book because of the first chapter and honestly I don't want to say that it went downhill from there because it makes it seem like this book was horrible but it wasn't like I gave it three stars because it just I couldn't help comparing it to birthday girl and it just didn't live up to it I am kind of a stickler when it comes to age gap romances like they have to be done a certain way and Birthday Girl was done right because it was slow burn and the romance in it was so epic and it seemed inevitable and you really felt like that couple needed to be together. Like their romance was inevitable. They were meant to be. In this book, it was much more insta-lovey. The taboo part seemed more taboo in this book than it did in Birthday Girl, for example. And it wasn't by any means bad. I will definitely be reading more books by this author and I am glad that I read it. It's just, if you're reading this and you loved Birthday Girl and you're expecting it to be like Birthday Girl, it's not it's not quite going to be the same. And then I ended up picking up Act Your Age, Eve Brown. It's the Brown Sisters book number three by Talia Hibbert. This one is my favorite book in all three of the books. So if you are for some reason like holding off on reading this one and you've already read the first two, absolutely read this one. I feel like the series though can be read out of order. I don't feel like you need to read them in order. I mean, you do see the other sisters in the background, but they don't play a big enough part for you to have to read them in order. So if you wanna read this one first because it sounds interesting, then go ahead and do that. I don't think it'll be a problem, but the entire series is great. I'm pretty sure this is the third and final book in this series, which is sad, but it went out with a bang because this book is my favorite book. So part of that is because I love Eve. Like I love both of the main characters, but Eve is a very fickle main character. She's get, kind of getting cut off by her family because she has gone through so many different jobs. She's just very fickle and she can't really find her passion. And she's one of those people who is like a jack of all trades, master of none. And I can relate to that. She's treated like she's the youngest. She's treated like a baby. And I get that too. I'm the youngest of four kids in the family. And I do get Get treated like a baby sometimes. Sometimes I like live that up and I will use that to my advantage. But other times I feel like I'm not taken as seriously as maybe I should be sometimes just because of maybe my track record and my fickleness and everything like that. And I feel like that's how it is for Eve. The hero, this ends up being like not necessarily enemies to lovers or like hate to love, but he doesn't like her when he first meets her. She like kind of impromptu like on a whim sees this advertisement for a chef and she's a good cook and so she's like eh, I'll, I'll just like whatever I'll I'll interview for it but she's like not dressed for it and the hero is very meticulous about everything being in order and he wants things a certain way he's also autistic so he's very turned off by this when he first meets her and the entire time he's just like not having it when they're interviewing and she can kind of tell and they have this really good like banter with each other right from the beginning but then one thing leads to another and it's really really funny how she actually ends up getting the job and then there ends up being like a forced togetherness situation in it 
it. And then the whole atmosphere of it is really fun because it all takes place within this bed and breakfast. And she is like the chef for this bed and breakfast. And they slowly but surely become friends. And then from there, it develops into something more. And it's just so good. And Tally Hibbert, by the way, writes the best steamy scenes, like the best. But also the representation, as always, that's what I love about Talia Hibbert too. Like she usually has... In this series, she has a lot of chronic illness representation. There's anxiety representation in this series. In this book, there's autistic representation as well. Um, the heroine is pretty sure that she's autistic, and she kind of is going on that journey, like realizing that in this book. And I feel like I learned a little bit. Like They talk about stimming in this book, and I hadn't heard of that before. And I felt like I learned something reading this book too, which I always appreciate. So I don't know. It was just, it was so good. I loved, I love that kind of relationship. I love a grumpy hero and I love like a little bit flighty heroine too. And that's kind of how she was. So there was so much to love about this one. It's my favorite book in the series so far. Okay. And then I ended up picking up Eight by Rilsey Adams. This is a super, super, super short and super, super steamy novella and I was very excited about this one because I love the premise of it and I still love the premise of it. It's a romance between a girl and a personal chef. So she actually, I love how this all plays out. She actually ends up hiring a personal chef and I forget, she's celebrating something, can't remember what it is. And it was supposed to be her and I think one of her friends is supposed to come over and they were supposed to have a personal chef come and cook for them. And like, by the way, what a great idea as a celebration. Like once there's no pandemic, like if ever I have anything to celebrate, I feel like that's what I want to do. Like have a personal chef come in and cook for me. What a great way to celebrate and like still stay home and stuff. So the personal chef ends up being the hero and her friend ends up canceling on her. So it's just her and the personal chef and they end up having this really great banter together. My only complaint about it and the only reason why I gave it four stars instead of five is because I wanted it to be longer. Like I wanted the story to go on. <laughs> it was, it's super, super short. I can't remember how many pages is, but it felt short. And that was kind of my only complaint. Like it definitely could have gone longer. And I feel like it wouldn't have felt dragged out because it was just that good. Like the banter was really good. All right. And then I picked up The Merman's Kiss. It's Mates for Monsters, book number one by Tamsin Lay. This is a book that I had downloaded for free on Kindle. I always do my ebook hauls every month. And most of them are books that I downloaded for free or on Kindle Unlimited. This was one that I downloaded for free. I was very, very excited about it because I was like merman romance heck yeah and going into it I thought it was going to be like kind of like an alien romance where you know it's going to be a faded mates thing and it's going to be a little bit cheesy but still really steamy and really good it wasn't what I expected it took itself much more seriously than I had anticipated taking it so it threw me off a little bit I gave I ended up giving this three stars mostly because of that there was a lot of angst and a lot, a lot of drama in it, like right from the beginning. And there are definitely triggers in this one. So check out the trigger warnings I list down below because the heroine, it's there's a loss of a child. Like right from the beginning, the heroine is married and she had lost her baby and the husband like kind of doesn't really care. And then she attempts suicide by drowning herself. She tries to kill herself and that's how she meets the merman because he saves her. So like super dramatic right from the beginning. And I was like, whoa, this is way more dramatic than I thought it was gonna be. And it continued to be really dramatic and kind of heavy for a book that's a merman romance, which I wasn't expecting. And maybe that's on me, but it was just, it was not quite what I was looking for. The world was actually interesting because apparently in this world, like mermen, if they mate with a mermaid, like, and they have children, the merman is the one who stays with the children and the mermaid like goes off and maybe like makes more children with someone else or something. So I thought that was interesting too, but it ended up being like very dramatic and a lot was happening and it kind of lost me and in the world building of all that toward the end. So I was kind of like, eh, about it. And I probably won't move on in the series. And then I went on to my Jessica Kane marathon. So I'm not going to talk too much about these because I talk a lot more about them in that reading vlog. So I will link that reading vlog below, but let's just start talking about them. So one of them is The Husband Sitter by Jessica Kane. This one maybe was one of my favorite ones that I read. I ended up giving it five stars. This one, the heroine is an empath who lives in a commune and she's an empath where like if someone's feeling really happy and she's feeling it, she can almost like project that back onto them and amplify it a little bit. So her mother is like, use your gift for good and spread the love, blah, blah, blah. And so her way of spreading the love <laughs> is she looks up like some ads and she finds this ad. I forget what the ad says, but it's something like really vague and she ends up going and it ends up being like these three women who want her to 
hook up with their husbands for three different reasons. So one of them um, like travels a lot and she wants her husband to be satisfied without her there, and, but she'd rather it be with someone that she knows. And so she wants her to like sleep with her husband for that reason. Another one, she wants her to sleep with her husband to boost his confidence. And that couple, I think they were Mr. and Mrs. Blue. They were my favorite I, because I loved the hero in that. Like, I guess he used to be an athlete, but he's like retired now. And the wife like likes to watch and pretend like she's walking in on them. Like that's her thing. She also wants her husband to be more confident. And the last one is like, a senator or something and he has like a thing for a daddy kink and his wife is like concerned that people are going to find out about this if he keeps doing like these web searches so here comes this girl and this girl is supposed to like relieve that like stepdaughter daddy kink thing isn't that more concerning like if someone found that out would that be more concerning but it ends up being like this whole polyamorous thing anyway it was actually really interesting and I actually liked it because it was such a interesting premise. Obviously, for all Jessica Kane novels, this goes across the board. You really have to suspend your disbelief to kind of buy into it. And then another one was My Best Friend, My Stalker. And this one I ended up getting giving four stars. This is the darkest Jessica Kane novel I've ever read. It's not the darkest novel I've ever read. I've definitely read books that are much darker than this, but for Jessica Kane, it's pretty dark. This is an obsessive bad boy hero. The heroine in the beginning is escaping from being assaulted by her stepbrother. And the hero like comes across her as he's like driving by, ends up like taking her back to his house and ends up being like, and interestingly enough, ends up being stalker to best friends to lovers because he doesn't stalk her before they meet, but after they meet, he becomes obsessed with her, but he's like trying to hide it. He doesn't want to freak her out, but then he like stalks her and then like they end up being together. There's definitely dubious consent and things and there's some consent issues in this for sure. I did really like it. One thing I actually really liked in this, which is different from a lot of Jessica Kane novels, is that neither of them wanted kids, which I appreciated because a theme that I've noticed in Jessica Kane novels is when you have the obsessive hero and usually her books have obsessive heroes in it, which I'm usually okay with, but they have this thing with wanting to impregnate the heroine. It, it weirds me out sometimes and I don't love that. So I actually appreciated that this particular couple was so obsessed with each other that they didn't want kids. So that was interesting. And then the whole reason why I marathoned Jessica Kane novels was because I wanted to read her new book, which is Breaking the Bully, which is a bully romance. And the reason why I wanted to read this book, not because I like bully romances, actually the opposite. I hate bully romances normally. Like when people ask what your least favorite trope is, that's always my answer. I don't like bully romances. And the number one reason why I don't is because there's not enough groveling. Because usually you have a bully who's doing horrible things and he does not grovel enough. This book flipped the switch. I gave it five stars. This is the first bully romance that I actually really, really liked. And it's because the groveling was epic. So if you are looking for a bully romance with epic groveling, this is the one. And then I read His Summer Intern by Jessica Kane also. This one I gave three stars. It was a little bit disappointing because it is the loner hero. And it's like a runaway heroine. She's like escaping from mental institution, I think. And he is a writer and he has like PTSD. He was in the military. And I thought it was going to be good because it's a loner hero, but he actually was much more like a stereotypical Jess Kane hero where very possessive, very obsessive. There were consent issues in this. And also like the heroine was like super virginal and everything. And just he was one of those heroes who like wanted to impregnate her because he was so obsessed with her and stuff. And I was like, eh, it was just eh. So three stars. And another one was The Farmer's Daughter. And that one I also gave three stars. This one, I had a lot of trouble suspending my disbelief for this one because it ends up being a menage romance. The two guys aren't together, but the girl is with both the guys and they end up like having this whole thing. And it was really hard for me to suspend my disbelief. It's also an age gap romance for one of the, for the girl and one of the guys. Probably would have liked it better if it would have ended up being a love triangle. I know a lot of people don't like love triangles, but I do. In this case, the menage just felt forced. The heroine has been like lusting after this guy who works on her father's farm and he's older than her. But when she turns 18, she like throws himself at him and then he like disses her and is like, no, you're just, you're too young, whatever. And then she ends up like going and crying off by herself in the field. And then this other random guy shows up and he's like suddenly immediately obsessed with her, like talk about insta love. And then they all end up hooking up and it's just, it was a lot. And then I read Pound of Flesh by Jessica Kane, and this one I gave five stars. I really liked this one. If you like a giant, big, beastly hero who's scarred and like possessive and obsessive with a heroine, but he's like this big beast of a guy who also doesn't think that he's good enough for her, it's also a little bit of a Beauty and the Beast type of retelling because he ends up kidnapping her. If you like that kind of thing, then this one's actually a really good one. And of course, again, all of Jessica Kane's novels are short and steamy. 
So this one I really liked because I really like the heroine. Like she was an irreverent heroine, which I feel like you don't often get, especially in novellas like this. And I loved it in this book. And there's this one scene in particular, which is the main reason why I liked it so much. And it's a scene where like a bunch of people are kind of like staring at them because he's scarred and he's beastly and she's beautiful. And so people are like looking at them like oh, weird. People even come up to them. They're like, are you okay? Are you sure you want to be with this man? Which is like nice and all, but she takes offense to that. And so she basically like throws herself at him to prove to everyone. And it's just great. And then the last one that I ended up reading by Jessica Kane was Pretty Daring. This one I gave three stars. It was way too much like stereotypical Jessica Kane, although part of it cause, could also have been the fact that I had read so many Jessica Kane books and I was just over it by this point. So this one, the hero is a bad boy. He's ex-con and the heroine is very rich. It's a forbidden romance. And there's also like blackmailing involved and he's super overprotective. He's also like, I want to impregnate you, one of those kind of heroes. And it was just like, eh. The one upside was that the hero looks like Thor, so that's always fun. All right, so the next are rereads and I talk about these books all the time. In fact, I have a whole video that is talking about Lauren Rowe books. So these are all, I ended up rereading the entire Morgan Brothers series the entire Reed Rivers trilogy and Smitten. This is um, one of the books in the Morgan Brothers series. I ended up reading all of those books because Lauren Rowe is coming out with, ooh, actually, so the day, I think I'm posting this on Monday, so it's coming out maybe the week that this is being posted by like the end of the week. I think it's coming out on the 15th. Lauren Rowe has a new duet coming out and it takes place in the Morgan Brothers world, so I wanted to read books in the Morgan Brothers world. So I read the entire Morgan Brothers series which is Hero, Captain, Mr. Bodyguard, Ball Peen Hammer, and Rockstar. And then the Reed Rivers trilogy, which is Bad Liar, Beautiful Liar, Beloved Liar, and then Smitten, which is kind of like a spinoff standalone. And I read all that because the new books are coming out. But like I said, I talk about all of those books in my Lauren Rowe video. So if you want to know more about those, check them out. All right. And then I ended up reading All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. Mariana Zapata is one of the rare authors, Mariana Zapata and Lauren Rowe actually, the rare authors that I will read their book as soon as they come out because I am caught up with their entire backlist and I'm obsessed with them. So Mariana Zapata tends to come out with books once a year and this book, I feel like it's been over a year. So I never read the premise of these books because I just know what I'm in for. Like I know it's gonna be a slow burn. I know it's gonna be contemporary. I know I'm gonna love the characters in it and the relationships in it. Not just the romantic relationship, but I usually love the side relationships because she's such a great writer when it comes to relationships between characters. That was exactly what I got. So this one is a Sunshine Grumpy Romance which I love. It's also takes place in a very atmospheric small mountain town. Like I think it's in Colorado, but it's a small town. And then it has a loner hero. He's also a single dad and there's forced proximity. And of course it's a slow burn. It's so freaking good. There are so many scenes in this that I was like, oh, this is why. And because Mariana Zapata comes out with books like once a year, it's been a while since I've read a Mariana Zapata book. It's like, I almost forget how good it is. Like, I know, I know that it's good because I reread her books a million times. I know that they're good, but there's a part of me that whenever she comes out with a new book, there's a part of me that's a little bit afraid that I'm not going to like it as much as the last one. And that's how it was with this book because it had been longer than I normally go between reading Mariana Zapata books. And I was like, what if this one's just not as good? And I read it and I was like, this is it. This is why I love Mariana Zapata. I am immersed in her books and I don't ever want to stop reading, but it's to my detriment because I end up reading her books in one day. This is a 551 page book. And it's funny because like, I'll look at a book, like one of the books I'm going to talk about later, it is a chunky book and I'll look at a contemporary romance and it'll be over 300 pages. And I'm like, why, why is the contemporary romance over 300 pages? And then Mariana Zapata comes out with a 551 page book. And I'm like, why isn't this a thousand? pages it's not long enough <laughs> and it's just because it's so slow burn you have to wait so long for the couple to really get together however the little moments that she gives you are so glorious and priceless that it makes it worth it and this book was full of moments like that and it's a single dad romance so there's a kid in this and I think he's maybe like 12, 13, 14, 15. I can't remember. He's a teenager of some sort. Um, but her relationship with him is great. And I don't normally like kids in romance novels, but Mariana Zapata has had kids in a couple of her books. And I've loved the relationship between the main character and the children every single time she's ever had a kid in a book. So 
this is, it, it's so good. It's so good. If you are a Mariana Zapata fan, she will not disappoint. This book is so good. Okay. And then I ended up reading No Tomorrow by, okay. Is is her name Karen Cole? Is it Karen Cole? It's spelt like Karen or is it Karen? Is it just a different way of spelling Karen? I could have been saying this wrong the whole time. Anyway, it's No Tomorrow. This is a book that had been on my TBR forever. And then my friend Tara from the Read My Lips podcast, she got this book for me after I was on her, one of her episodes. I'll link it down below. And we ended up buddy reading this buddy reading it but I I'm a I'm a marathoner like I will read a book usually very quickly so I'm kind of the worst person to buddy read with because I read it too fast and so I think that Tara is still reading this one but we will be talking much more in depth about this book on her podcast when she finishes it I think at the end of the month so keep an eye out for that but <laughs> this book <laughs> this book was chaos it was chaos and it was like reading, it was like when I read after. Okay, backstory, I read every single book in the after series. I read every single book back to back to back. Those are giant books too. This is a giant freaking book. It was like I could not stop even though it was a train wreck. This was a bit of a train wreck of a book also. It was, it was very much on par with after. Like there was so much drama and so much stuff that was happening in this book that I was just like, what? Like really? And yet I could not put this book down. I will say though, this is much better written than after was. And I also can already tell that this is going to be an author that I like and that I want to read more of, even though I didn't love this book. So I gave, I gave it ultimately three stars because it was, it was just a lot. And I have, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I am questioning a lot of things in this book, which again, I will talk about much more in depth with Tara, but I have a lot of questions about this book. I have a lot of like, really? Things that happen about this book. And yet I've heard so many good things. I think what, it, I think there's a duet, maybe it's called Torn or something that a lot of people really love. Like anytime I've mentioned this book that like I was reading this book or anything, people have mentioned that this maybe wasn't their favorite book, but they liked other books by this author. So I'm absolutely by no means giving up on this author because I can already tell that there are elements of good things in this book. And I also think this book was published a while ago too. So it might be a product of its time, but yeah. So I will absolutely be reading more by this author. I will be keeping this book because I like the cover of it, but I ultimately gave it three stars. I didn't love it, but I have a feeling I'm going to love other books by this author. What did I read next? It is like poor. I don't know if you guys can see. It's like, can you see my window? Oh, you can see that window. It's like pouring rain outside right now. And it's such a great like reading day. And here I am filming instead. All right, so after No Tomorrow, I wanted to pick up a shorter book, and I ended up picking up My Sister, the Serial Killer. And this is a book that I got because I I saw Books on Lala talk about it in one of her videos a while ago, and it just sounded interesting to me. And then I saw it was on sale on, I think, Audible or Libro FM. I can't remember which one I listened to it on. But I bought the audiobook for it, and I am so glad that I bought the audiobook because the audiobook is fan fantastic. The narration is great. The Nigerian accent, amazing. This book, so interesting. Basically, it's about a girl and her sister. It's mainly, this is a mystery thriller. Like, it opens up with her helping her sister after she killed someone, and like, it's her helping her sister, like, clean up the evidence and get rid of the body and everything, and apparently her sister has, like, a history of, like, killing her boyfriends and guys that she's dating and her sister like blames it on the guy and says that they're attacking her and stuff but it's happened a lot like a few times and so she's like kind of questioning it so obviously she starts to be suspicious of her sister as well she should and then it's just an interesting dynamic between her and her sister and then the main thing is that like what finally makes the main character kind of question her sister finally. She has like this crush on a doctor that she works with, but then her sister has her eye on the doctor. And so now she's like, like, I really would like you not to kill this guy because I actually like him. So it's really, really interesting. And it's short and quick read. I read it in a day and I really liked it. And then I ended up reading From Blood and Ash. It's Blood and Ash book number one by Jennifer L. Armitrout. This is a fantasy romance. There was a read-along that Tori and Sam from Sam Reads a Little and Tori's from Novel Life. They did a read-along for it. They're doing a read-along for, I think, the three books in the series. I had read the first chapter in this book in my first chapter challenge. And I had asked if anyone wanted me to do a reading blog for this. And 
a couple of people said that they wanted me to. So I ended up doing an entire reading vlog where I go much more in depth in my thoughts on this that I will link down below. Basically, this is a fantasy romance epic romance with a badass heroine. She is considered the maiden and she's like hidden behind a veil and she's kind of kept away and everything, but she likes to sneak out a lot and she's awesome. Like her guard who she has like a father daughter kind of relationship with teaches her how to fight and also gives her a dagger. And so she knows how to fight, but she sneaks out a lot because she's very like confined and locked up and everything. And then she ends up getting a new personal guard and it's a relationship between her and her personal guard. This was my last Last chance for Jennifer L. Armitrout. And I was like, if I don't like this one, I'm not going to read anything else by this author. There are just way too many other books that I want to read out there. And if I can like take off a whole chunk of books, then I totally will. What I think I decided though, is that I'm probably not going to read any more of JLA's like older backlist and maybe focus on like her newer books. I'm actually not even sure if I will continue on with this series. I was very happy with this book. In the live show that Tori and Sam did, they were talking about how it's gonna be a six book series plus a bunch of prequels and stuff. And I'm like, that's just a lot, like it's too much. <laughs> That's a commitment that I don't think I want to have. <laughs> so I don't know that I will be reading on in this series, but I am glad that I read this book. And if you're interested in, again, more of my thoughts on it, I have an entire reading blog. It's like 45 minutes or more dedicated to just talking about this book. So I'm not going to talk about it anymore. And then I ended up picking up Ladies' Night by Christian Keys. This book I ended up giving four stars. This is a book that had been on my Audible Plus TBR for a really long time. So obviously this book is part of Audible Plus. And I mainly picked it up because when I saw in the description that it was a male stripper romance, I was like sold. And like Ball Peen Hammer is a male stripper romance. And I was like, I loved that one. I want all the male stripper romances. So I picked this one up just thinking it was gonna be maybe more rom-commy or very lighthearted. And it actually was a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be, but in a really good way. And I felt like I learned something from reading this book. So the hero was actually in prison. And in the beginning of the book, he is just let out of prison. And it's him moving into a halfway house and trying to build a life for himself and him just trying to be successful and having all the odds against him and the system against him because he ends up going to this halfway house and it's just he he has to get a job he's told he has to get a job it's so hard for him to get a job because no one wants to hire him because he was in prison it really digs deep into that and i appreciated that and i felt like i learned something from it and it just kind of opened my eyes up to that i liked the relationship so it there ends up a romance between him and the DJ at the strip club that he ends up working at. I felt like more than that relationship, I felt like the romance wasn't something that I loved the most in this. What I loved the most was the relationship between him and the, I forget what he's called, maybe the warden or something of the half, halfway house, the guy who kind of manages the halfway, halfway house. He almost ends up being almost like a father figure to the hero in this. And I loved their relationship. I also loved like the found family aspect in this, which was surprising. Like the woman who owns the strip club, how she almost treats the strippers and everything as like her family, like her workers as her family. And they all are like, at one point there's a risk of the club closing and they all kind of band together to raise money for it and everything. And I just, I loved it so much. I gave it four stars only because I didn't love the way it was told in some aspects. Like it changed point, not necessarily point of view. Like it talked about other characters occasionally and that it just felt disjointed doing that. But other than that, I really liked this book and I thought it was really good. Okay, and then last but not least, I finally read Lessons in Corruption. It's The Fallen Men, book number one by Gianna Darling. This was another book that I read in the first chapter challenge and I read the first chapter of this one and I definitely wanted to mo move on. It was actually, so for the first chapter challenge, I had people tell me the books that they wanted me to read and they actually wanted me to read the second book in this series, but I wanted to read this book first because I wanted to read it in order. But it's the first book in the Fallen Men series. And I ended up giving this one three stars. So similar to No Tomorrow, this is an author that I know I'm going to like, even though I didn't love this book. Because the reason why I didn't love this book was just because of the type of book that it was and it's just not for me, but I could tell from the writing and I can already tell I'm gonna like this series from seeing the other characters in the series. So this is an age gap student teacher romance and it's a high school student teacher romance, which already just isn't really my thing. It skews me out quite a bit. The hero is 18, so he's an adult, but he's still the student. It was also a weird dynamic, like the heroine, she wasn't a virgin because she was married previously, but she was very like, 
had an innocence about her, which seemed weird because she was the teacher. Like, I get that it's like kind of flipping the student-teacher relationship on its head because he was very dominating and stuff. His father, the hero's father, the hero goes by the name King, which I thought was kind of silly too. But anyway, I was much more interested in the hero's father, Zeus, and I wanted the relationship to be between her and Zeus. Like, I was like, give me more Zeus. And I'm pretty sure that Zeus has his own book, and it might even be the next book in the series. I don't know who it is about the next book. And I actually don't want to know because I just want to go in blind. I just want to like read these because honestly, it could be about anyone that was mentioned in the motorcycle club in this book. And I would be happy with it because I am intrigued by every single one of their stories. But again, just the nature of this book, it's just not my thing. Like, I feel like I would have liked it if the student teacher relationship of this wasn't in it, but that's such a core part of this book that you can't really like take it away. So I had to give it three stars because it was like, I didn't like that part of it. And that's just such a big part of it. But I like so many other things about it. And I know that I'm gonna like, the other books in the series. So I'm very excited to read on in this series. All right, guys, that's it. Those are all the books that I read recently. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy reading.